Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to another course vlog. We're out here at one of Travis Matthews Country Clubs. This is the Huntington Club, formerly known as Seacliff Country Club. It is here in my hometown of Huntington Beach, California. And today, for the first time in almost 34 years, I'm getting to tee it up around here on my own ball. Really, really looking forward to this opportunity. Make sure you subscribe down below. I'd love to have you back here week after week. We'll see you out on the first hole. Here we go. Now, as I said in the intro there, I have never been able to play this golf course on my own ball. I volunteered for many tournaments here, hitting tons of long drives on the 18th hole, but it was awesome to finally be able to tee it up on my own ball and see what I can shoot around this old track. It used to be the Huntington Beach Municipal, and now it's a private country club with here the first hole, the par five. You gotta thread those bunkers and you can't quite tell from the drone, but it's gonna head severely up the hill after those bunkers up to a little bit of a plateau next to this next set of bunkers here short of the green. As you're gonna see with the first green and many of them, it is everything in the difficulty of this golf course. A little skinny vertical green here on the first, which is really gonna test your accuracy left and right into this whole location. And today it was right in the middle of the green and not where I wanna be off the tee though. Left into the trees, we're gonna have to chip it out with a five iron. Back out to the fairway and we got a nine iron in our hands here from 160 yards. There was plenty of wind to contend with today. About a club and a half, sometimes up to a two club win for me. That's about 25 to 30 yards of adjustment on a full shot that I'm considering. A simple up and down for par here, a nice comfy tap in par to start the day. And we can head down to the first par four. Starting on top of the hill here and heading down to the fairway and down really all the way towards the green. This hole is going to play a lot shorter than it looks off the tee, especially with that wind off the ocean and at your back. That bunker down the right, don't even worry about it. Hit it over that bunker with all you got. Lay it down in somewhere in the short grass, leaving yourself an approach to this wide open green that you could run your ball up onto. It's like three times the size, the first green. Now, because of the length, I wanted to leave myself a full spinning wedge into this hole. I'm trying to really get some extracted numbers out of my wedges here. Working on flighting the sand wedge here from 105 yards. I didn't quite nip it as much as I wanted to. Hit it about 95 yards instead of 100 leave myself this long putt from the front of the green all the way to the back. And I learned quickly that not warming up at a private country club is not ideal on the greens because these greens were very, very slick today. I mean, hey, it's a perfect, perfect condition day. Just about 200 yards here on the par three third hole well over that lake, oh boy, and that bunker is gigantic in front of the green. It's pretty much bigger than your target that you're looking for, and with the lips in the front of the green, excuse me, on the lips in the front of the bunker, you can barely see the green. Trying to flush a six iron here, we had a long wait today. It was gonna be a long day, man, over five hours here at the club. It was a busy, busy afternoon. So a long wait here on the first par three, did not hit a great tee shot, but up onto the green under the hole, 20 feet here, it's makeable for par, but man, these greens really, really turn. Fast greens means they turn a lot, and that's something I'm gonna have to get used to if I'm gonna score out here. And finally, I got another par five in front of me, and the wind is still at my back, so it's time to take advantage. Wrapping way around to the right, I was told to aim further right than I could ever expect to do on this hole. So I tried to hit the tee shot over that tree there on the right instead of towards the bunker, which would give a great line into this green, which continues on around to the right. So many bunkers to, to contend with on this par five. It's easily the hardest hole in the golf course, nearly 600 yards, but the wind was at our back. Mm -hmm. 
Now, if I want to hit my tee shot a little bit higher, right before I hit it, I tilt back with my shoulders and let it fly up into the air and down as far as I can get it. About 340 yards off the tee for me here and a nice big four iron for me. Don't trust that tr shot tracer. This was a golf shot right onto the green above the hole though for Eagle. I really wanted to make that one the best I could, but it was ultimately underneath the hole here for a tap in birdie and we can head on down to the fifth. A string of par fours lays in front of us as we come on home here on the front nine. The fifth hole is the start of it, right at the top of the hill, back at the tee box and slightly down towards this green. Sitting at 400 yards, this hole is right in front of you. No trouble off the tee at all. It's wide open out there. Spray and play from anywhere, to be honest with you. A wedge hopefully is in your hand as you approach this green, which is severely tilted from back to front. When you have a back hole location, that's difficult to get a wedge close. Now, as the wind was picking up, I did not have my good microphone with me today, so we might have some choppy audio. As you hear that wind picking up, the <laughs> muted sound of the driver should tell you everything you need to know. A little bit of a chop down pitching wedge here into this green, only 115 yards, but I took my 150 club and tried to hit it low. I got it only to the middle of the green and almost rolled in that long birdie foot for back to back, but it just wasn't meant to be. Now the second hardest hole here on the front nine is considered to be this par four sixth hole. It's all about the tee shot here. If you place it correctly, all those bunkers do not come into play, but you know they're gonna come into play for nearly everyone, myself included. Driver over them would have left me an awkward number into this green, which I did not want with perfect, perfect greens here. You need a flush number into the flag. So I had to contend with the bunkers and hit an iron off the tee. That bunker on the left was really protecting that flag. Which meant a iron off to the right hand side of the fairway would be ideal. Now the group behind us was right there. That's how slow we were playing today. And with a wedge in my hand to this middle left hole location, I landed in the middle of the green with just too much spin. It's really difficult to control your spin into the wind. Man, it really exemplifies everything it's got. A long putt from the front of the green that I could not manage the speed again, sending it long by, but with perfect greens and perfect speed, it doesn't really matter how long your putts are, you can get them to go in the hole. Now the par four seventh hole here is finally up the hill a little bit. 368 yards and all uphill on the second shot, but the entire hole also faces that Pacific Ocean, so you know you're heading directly into the ocean breeze, especially here in the afternoon. 368 yards, try over 400 adjusted with some wind and hill. This is all the par four you would want. A front hole location is really gonna bring the false front and those bunkers into play. And there's a big drop off behind the green, protecting any of the back hole locations. Now another tee shot where I tried to stay right on top of it and hit it as low as possible. I was flushing that driver today. Right down Main Street again, I had a gap wedge here from only 100 yards. That's my 135 club, hitting it as hard as I can up the hill. And again, too much spin, it came off the front. But I can get a putter on it and head it on up there somewhere, not where I wanted to but it was underneath the hole, only four feet away. I had some confidence in it. So really, this was just a formality. Another one, another par, and we stay at even par. Now another par four, but man, these par fours and the variety are awesome. Every single one here has been different. This par four eighth, almost 450 yards, 
off of a little perch tee box. You have a blind tee shot, really, because it stares out towards those maintenance sheds on the right, and the hole goes severely to the left. The first hole that really has carved to the left this much, this is an awkward tee shot as the ferry runs out short. And then you have a severe, almost 200 yard shot from that curve in the fairway and all the way to this back hole location, it's a long hole. So I tried my best to hit it low and hit it left. Well, it worked. I carved it around the corner, just popped it out of the bunker here, and it was on a horrible, horrible lie. That lie was below my feet and uphill, straight into the wind. I took a nine iron from 145 yards and just sent it up into the sky. Luckily, it found the shortest grass on this hole, and I was able to hit the flat stick on it up there nice and close for really a comfy tap in par here on the eighth. As we close out that stretch of par fours, even par still on the front nine, we can head into a nice little par three. I would believe the ninth would also serve as their 19th hole as it's right here next to the clubhouse. Just a little wedge for most, depending on the tee box you're playing. This is a nine iron for me though, to this back hole location. The wind now is coming off the left, pushing your ball to the right and towards that water. And for me, just down towards the fringe. I had the right distance. It just aired a little bit to the right. Good, 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 good. Hey, that's nine holes down. We'll see you next time. Later.